Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and this is a My First with Marley Bird project. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these super cute ballerina bloom leg warmers. Now these leg warmers are completely on trend and are perfect for that little girl in your life. Do you have to be a ballerina to wear these? Absolutely not. Come on. We all you remember wearing these way back in the day, whether it was over top of a pair of jeans or maybe just sporting some Keds and wearing our nice jean skirt. These things are really super cute and very easy to make. Now this is a free pattern available over on redheart.com. You can find the link to it down in the video notes below or if you click on that link right there, it'll take you to the pattern. The other thing about this pattern is that it's written to be made either in the round or to be made flat. Now, if this is your very first My First with Marley Bird video, then welcome, we're glad you're here. You are going to find that these videos are specifically geared towards the beginner so that you can learn how to make really great projects and maybe some tips and tricks along the way. Having said that, for this particular project, I'm gonna show you how to knit them flat and then show you how to seam them up. The reason I wanna do that is because all too often, knitting something in the round that is this small you'd have to use double pointed needles and that really scares beginners so I don't want to scare you off here at the very beginning but just rest assured I will show you how to do double pointed needles at a future date just not right now so don't be afraid of these little leg warmers I can show you how to make these knit up flat with straight needles and then we can seam them up create the really super cute decorative flower which is a great little object to learn because you could throw this on a flower if not leg warmers um, it's just a cool little um, applique or accessory to learn how to do. So why don't you go ahead, go download the pattern once again over on redheart.com, gather your materials and join me back here and I'm going to get you started on this really great project. You've got your materials and your pattern. Take a look down here. I want to talk to you a little bit about the pattern first. As you look down here at the pattern, the first thing I want to point out is that over here in the material section, you'll notice that it gives you the heart, the red heart yarn that you're going to need. Um, this pattern specifically calls for red heart soft baby steps. I'm going to use red heart soft yarn, just regular red heart soft yarn for the video today. Along with the yarn and the needles, you're also going to need a bent tip tapish needle, sometimes called a yarn needle, to one, weave in your ends, and two, to seam the leg warmers together. Besides that, the last thing would be a decorative button to place in the center of the flower, and that's all you need for this uh, particular project. As we look back down here at the pattern, you can see that these instructions are written for several different sizes. The way you know what size you want to follow along is that the first size, the size four, is written outside of the parentheses. And then each number on the inside the parentheses represents either for the size six, eight, 10, or 12. So if you were going along, and I'm just gonna use this, if you wanted to take a highlighter and say you were making the size four, I want you to at this time highlight all of the numbers that are the first number outside of the parentheses all the way through the whole pattern okay if you're not making a size four then of course you would go and highlight one of the alternate sizes as long as you are highlighting the numbers that pertain to the size you're making that's what we want to do here we want to make sure that you're following the right instructions as we go along the pattern now that we have the pattern completely prepped and ready for us to use let's go ahead and grab our needles and get started The instructions say they want us to begin with the size seven needle or the larger size needle. The reason is they are making sure that you're not going to cast on your stitches too tight. So we're going to start off by casting on to the larger needle, but then we're gonna switch over to the smaller needle. To cast on, I want you to go ahead and do the knitted cast on. For that, you're going to create a slip knot if you need a refresher on how to do a slip knot, there is a link to it right there on the screen, or you can find a link to it down in the video notes. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my other needle, and I'm gonna go into the slip knot, just like that, just like I'm going to knit. I'm gonna take my yarn, wrap it around my right hand needle, and then take that stitch that I just wrapped around the needle and come out of the slip knot. Now I extend that stitch, okay? Now I want you to pay attention to this. My left hand needle, it's gonna swivel around and place that stitch directly onto my left hand needle. Okay, it's very important that we swivel. I'm gonna go into the new stitch, so I'm into the new stitch. 
yarn over my needle, come out that stitch, extend, and then take my left hand needle and swivel. See that? I'm coming, it's like I'm coming underneath it and putting it on. In, around, out, extend, swivel, put it on. In, around, out, extend, swivel, put it on. In, around, out, extend, swivel, put it on. You're going to do this for the designated number of stitches that you need for the size you are making. Once you get the designated number of stitches on your needle that you need, you jump into row one. Don't forget to switch out your needles to the smaller size. So right now, I'm gonna drop my second size seven needle and grab one of my size sixes and knit onto my size six. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to knit this first stitch. Now in the pattern, it states that this first stitch is a selvage stitch. What that means is selvage is where we're going to actually seam the pieces together. So that first stitch gets hidden. Now it says to jump into our knit two, purl two ribbing. So I just knitted two stitches. I'm going to purl two stitches and I'm gonna continue this all the way to the end of the row. When I'm left with one stitch, I'm going to go ahead and knit it once again because that will be my selvage stitch. Now, if you need a refresher on how to do a knit to purl to ribbing, you can click on this link right here that's available on the screen, or there is a, a link to it down in the video notes below. The reason I'm not going to focus on the ribbing on this particular video is because I don't want these videos to become redundant. And I've done the ribbing pattern before, as you guys know. So I want you to make sure that you go back and check out how to do ribbing if you need a refresher on that, okay? Um, I've finished the end of my row. I knitted my last stitch, my selvage stitch and I'm switching hands. I'm also gonna remember to drop this other size seven and pick up the other size six. So now I have my size sixes ready to go. I continue on in pattern and I wanna make sure this first stitch is a selvage stitch, right? And in pattern it says to make it a purl. So I'm gonna purl my first stitch and then I go ahead and I jump into my pattern and I would go and I would do my knit two, purl two all the way down the row. You're gonna continue on with the knit two, purl two ribbing until your piece measures the specified measurement in your pattern. So make sure you take a look at the pattern and see how, how big, how long your particular ribbing section needs to be. Once you've done that, we'll move on to the next step. You know what, before you get too far, why don't we take a second right here and let me offer you a Marley Bird Pro tip, okay? This is a great opportunity for you to keep track of how many rows you have completed on this leg warmer. Go ahead and make a little tick mark every time you complete a row on your pattern. So that way, when you reach the specified measurement of your ribbing, you can make sure that when you make the second leg warmer, you can have the exact same number of rows, okay? All too often, when instructions are given and it says go until you reach a certain measurement, we tend to forget how many rows that actually is. And then we're, to the point where we'll put both pieces side by side. And go, well, do they look like they're about the same? I don't know. If you're one of those people that's like me and wants them to be absolutely perfect, go ahead and just make that little tick mark for how many, every time you finish a row, do a tick mark. And then once it reaches your one inch or one and a quarter inch or whatever it is, now you know how many rows you did to complete that particular measurement. And then you can do that on the second leg warmer. Now you've completed your ribbing, it's time that we jump in and begin the body of the leg warmer. When we do the body of the leg warmer, we're actually going to work some increases here on the sides, so that way it, it's nice and narrow down by the ankle, not super narrow, but you know, narrower, and then it comes out a little bit so that it expands a little bit for the calf, okay? So go ahead, pick up your work, and let's jump in. Here at the start, we're gonna go ahead and change to our larger needle. So I'm going to take my size six and put it aside and grab my size seven. I'm gonna jump in and it says we're gonna start off with a knit one. I'm gonna hold my yarn in the other hands that I am consistent for you guys. I'm gonna do my knit one once again because this is still our selvage stitch. 
Now we're going to do an M1R. That is a make one right. So we're gonna take our left hand needle and we're going to go from the back to the front, from the back to the front and pick up that little bar right there. You see that bar? Okay, that's actually the string that joins that stitch to the stitch down there that we just knit. So we just picked up that bar. Now what we're going to do is we're going to knit that bar through the front leg or through the leg that's the hardest to get into. What that's going to do is it's going to twist the stitch. Can you see that? I went into the front leg. I'm going to knit it. And what that does is it twists the actual bar, it twists the bar so we don't get a hole and we get a really nice stitch right there. So once we've done that, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna knit to the last stitch so we're no longer paying attention to our ribbing at all. We're just gonna knit to the end of the row until we get to the last stitch because then we're gonna do another increase because we want our increases to be symmetrical. So we want one on each side. So when you do an increase on one side, you have to do an increase on the opposite side for this pattern. So I'm down here to this last stitch and this time we're gonna do an M1L, which is a make one left. So this time I take my left hand needle and going from front to back, I'm gonna scoop up that bar. See how I scooped up the bar? I'm gonna let go, take my left hand needle, I'm gonna scoop up the bar. And now I'm going to knit that stitch through the back leg, okay? I'm gonna knit it through the back leg right there. And when I do that, I'm going to twist that stitch. See how that stitch is twisted? Can you see how the legs are twisted together right there? I don't get a hole and I go ahead and I finish my last stitch here. Now the pattern says we're going to continue in stockinette stitch and remember stockinette stitch is where you knit on the right side purl on the wrong side and you're going to do that for x number of rows. Now you know how many number of rows you need to complete because you've already highlighted that number in your pattern. So go ahead work that number of rows and then it's going to be time to do another increase and you're going to do the increase just like we did before. I'm going to work several rows right here and I'm going to walk you through that increase one more time. I also want to remind you, make sure you switch to the other larger needle, so your other size 7 needle, before you move on to the next row, okay? All right, so I've worked a couple rows in stockinette, and I want to show you how to do those increases one more time, okay? So if you take a look down here, I'm on a right side row, I'm on a knit row, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an increase again. So I'm going to knit my first stitch. And now I have to do a make one right. So I take my left hand needle. Can you see the bar? There's the bar right there. I'm going to scoop up that bar and then I'm going to knit it through the front leg. And I know it is hard. You have to kind of wiggle your needles in there and make sure you're not splitting the yarn one and make sure the stitch actually doesn't fall off. But once you complete it, it twists that stitch right there and it makes it so that you have an extra stitch now, but you don't have a resulting hole that you would have if you did, say, a, a, a yarn over and you don't have an, a, a, a purl bump if you did a knit front and back. So this is a great way to do sort of an invisible increase, okay? So now I'm knitting to the end of the row until I get to one stitch left. And when I get there, I'm going to do my make one left. And once I show you that, I'm going to talk to you about the rest of the pattern. So I'm here at the last stitch. For a make one left, I go from front to back. And now I go ahead and I knit into the back leg of that stitch, just like that. And it twists the stitch, finish the end. And now I have two more stitches than I had before. Even right now, you can tell that my work is starting to get a little bit wider. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set this aside. And I'm gonna pull in a swatch that I've already completed up. And you can see I have the live stitches on a stitch holder, so that way I can work into them and show you guys something more. But right down here, this was my original cast on, and then I worked the designated measurement I needed for my ribbing. And you can tell right here, the stockinette is wanting to curl on itself. See that? See how it's curling in? 
That is perfectly normal. The natural state of stockinette stitch is that it wants to curl. So don't worry that you're doing something incorrect if you're working along and your work is starting to curl. That's the way it happens with stockinette. Once we seam it closed, it won't curl anymore. Everything will be nice and neat. But as I hold it out just a little bit wide for you guys, you can see here how my stitches are starting to get a little bit wider, correct? Just by doing my make ones. And I want to offer another little Marley Bird pro tip. If you use a stitch marker um, to, to show you where the row is that you last did your increase, it will help you when you're counting, okay? So for example, I put my stitch marker on the actual stitch of the row that I um, increased on. So once I knit that first stitch, the first salvage stitch, I put my stitch marker on it. And then I did my increase and I worked to the last stitch of the row, did my increase and then knit my last stitch. What this does allows me to say, okay, so that was my increase row. And then I worked nine rows or however many rows you needed to work. And then I was able to do another increase. So this is just another way that you're able to use stitch markers, removable stitch markers. Again, this is a removable stitch marker. It comes, it snaps on and off. I love these little stitch markers. Um, to help you keep place in your pattern, okay? Once you've increased the number of times that the pattern states you need to increase, you work even in the pattern for several inches, okay? So it tells you until the piece measures X number of inches, and it says from the beginning. So you will actually measure from the very beginning to whatever point it is until it measures, you know, eight inches, nine inches, 10 inches, whatever it is in your pattern. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and make sure you're on, a, you completed a wrong side row, so you're getting ready to start a right side row. Switch back to your smaller needles, and then you work your ribbing again. So this side of the ribbing will match this side of the ribbing. So once again, it will be the same number of rows that you did down here. So if you took my little tip last time of putting a little tally mark, you will know exactly how many number or how many rows you need to do on this side of the leg warmer. Once you have finished on this side of the leg warmer, it's in important that we bind off loosely. So that's why I have these on a stitch holder is I'm gonna show you how to bind off loosely, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these on a needle and show you how to do that. I've put my stitches back on my needle and it's time for me to go ahead and bind off loosely. Now this is one of my favorite ways to bind off loosely and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. This is set up very similar to the normal way you would bind off. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to knit two stitches. Once we get two stitches on our right hand needle, we're going to place our left hand needle into the front leg of those two stitches. See how that is? Front leg of those two stitches. Once that's there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit those two stitches together. So when I pop that through and off, those two stitches are now bound off and I'm left with one stitch on my right hand needle, just like a typical bind off. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to knit my next stitch, take my left hand needle, go into the front leg of those two stitches and knit them together. Now you could at this point bind off in pattern, meaning the next two stitches are purls. So I could purl them, go ahead and purl one stitch and then I would have to bring my yarn back to the back, stick my left hand needle into the front leg of those two stitches, and knit those together. But if you didn't want to bind off in pattern, you could go ahead and just continue knitting. I like the way the in pattern looks. I think it helps maintain the ribbing. Um, and so even though it is a little bit tedious because you have to move your yarn from the front to the back and back to the front several times to accommodate, I think it gives a very nice touch. Just remember, once you have two stitches on your right hand needle, take your left hand needle, stick it into the front leg of those two stitches, and then knit them together. I Biggest thing is when you're working in the in, in pattern to do the bind off using this method, you really want to make sure that you move the yarn between your needles as you go from a knit to a purl and to a purl to a knit. Does that make sense? Go ahead and continue binding off all the way to the end of this row and I'm gonna show you what to do on the very last stitch. 
I just finished doing my last knit two together, which means I have one stitch left on my right hand needle. Now at this point, typically I would just cut my yarn leaving four to six inches and then pull the stitch out, correct? Well, because we're going to actually seam the edges of this piece together, why not let our tail here be super long and we can use it for our seaming yarn. So I am just pulling out a length of yarn that I think is long enough to seam this particular leg warmer and I snipped my yarn there. Now I can go ahead and extend this stitch up and let it finish off just like normal. Pull, 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 pull. Once it's pulled, you give that a little tug and it's ready. Now let's take a look at this ribbing, okay? As we look at this ribbing, we can see it looks a little bit stretched out, maybe here at the beginning, but as I pull it in, get the ribbing back where it needs to be, look, it's perfectly normal. But here's the great thing about this being bound off in the method I showed you. Look at that stretch. Can you see that nice big stretch there? What that stretch is going to allow the leg warmer to do is to fit over the heel of the foot as you're putting the leg warmer on and it's not going to restrict any sort of circulation around the calf as it's being worn. The elasticity of the ribbing is still there but we have a really nice stretch at the top that we wouldn't get if we did a typical bind off. So that's why I really like that bind off. Word to the wise, it's a really great bind off for the top of a toe up sock as well. So now let's go ahead and learn how to seam this particular leg warmer together using the mattress stitch. The mattress stitch is one of those stitches that is a great tool for you to know and use whether you're making something as simple as a leg warmer or something a little bit more complex like maybe a sweater. It's a way to seam two pieces of knitting together that look relatively seamless. It is a really beautiful join and one that is not a really difficult way to, to join. You just have to have a little bit of patience, a really good yarn needle, so a good uh, tool, and you can do this. Let me show you how. As you look down here, you can see I'm using a steel tapestry needle that has a large eye for the yarn to go through. These are sometimes called a yarn needle. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to thread that tail into the eye and get ready to go. Now you'll remember this is the tail that I left really super long after I did my bind off. Now I flipped my work inside out, meaning I'm looking at all of my pearls here, okay? And the reason I've done that is because you actually do this seaming with the right side facing you, okay? So as these pieces are brought together, I'm actually going to be seaming it with the right side facing me. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put these salvage edges on either side that we created into the inside of the leg warmer, okay? I am going to go ahead and I'm going to start off here with a figure eight join. So my yarn is already attached over here. So I'm going to come over here to the corresponding stitch on the other side of the leg warmer and just pop my needle through that stitch the best I can. I want to make sure I get into the right spot right there. So I'm just going to come up that section. I'm ignoring any of my tails that are hanging out right now because I can weave those into the nice big seam I'm going to get. Now I'm come back, I've come back to the other side where I started from and I'm coming up that side. Okay. So here I am. I'm ready to start. Now the first thing you'll notice is that I have my work tilted this way because I am right-handed and I'm going to use the needle into my, in my right hand to seam this way. You can tilt it the other way. It's really no big deal. The motion is still the same whether you're right or left-handed. I do use my left hand to help me keep the stitches as straight as possible and to make sure that I am maintaining the roll or maintaining Let's see, how do I say this? Make sure that I am not uh, accidentally forgetting that there's a roll there. I'm making sure that it's unrolled so that I'm coming up the right lane of stitches, okay? So here I am, I'm over here. My yarn came out at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop back over here to this side. I'm gonna go in where I came out and I'm going to go up 
two bars. Now there are two bars right there, okay? So it's like I'm splitting the stitches, okay? I'm going between the stitches and I'm coming up and I'm just going through two bars. I'm popping back over here. I'm gonna go in where I came out and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna snag two bars. There's a bar right there and a bar right there. And I'm going up. Coming back over to this side, going in where I came out, going up. You see that? See those two bars right there? There's one bar, two bar, and I thread the yarn through. Pop back over here, go in where I came out, come up, I have my two bars, and keep going. You keep going back and forth like this, sort of like lacing up a shoe, going in where you came out each time, making sure you're going up, getting two bars. So I'm in where I came out, going up, grabbing two bars, and going along. You wanna make sure you're just working one row in from the edge, or one, no, I shouldn't say one row, one stitch in from the edge. So I'm going in, you can see my two bars right there, and I'm pulling up. I'm gonna do this all the way up. As I get into the stockinette portion, it's gonna become easier here. So I've come in where I went out, I'm popping it up, and I have my two bars, and I continue on. As you're going along here, you will notice that as you pull the, the yarn, the tail, nice and tight, it's bringing together this edge to this edge, and it's gonna look really super pretty. So just make sure you go in where you came out, follow along the line of the stitches that you're going along, and then make sure you have two bars and pull up. Now I did leave in my stitch markers that I showed you guys before that you could use to show where you did your increases. And the reason I did that is because I got a question asking me, hey Marley, if I use those stitch markers to symbolize where my increase is, do I have to take them out? The answer is no. The other question I got is, hey Marley, if I'm using these bars to actually seam up my leg warmer, are they the same bars I used when I did my increase? And is that gonna affect anything? So, the question, the first question, are these the same bars I used when I made my increase? The answer is yes. Are they gonna affect the way I, I do my seaming because I have an increase at that same bar? The answer is no. So that's the other reason I left the marker in place because I want you to be able to see here, when I come over here to where this, is, this row is where I did my increase, I can just keep going right here and I can still get two bars where the increase was created because I'm just using it to seam it together. I'm not creating any extra stitch there so it's not making it any extra like, snug or tight or anything of that sort. It's just simply a way to make sure I'm maintaining the same row all the way down. And as long as I grab the little bit of the bar there that is remaining, so to speak, can you see right there? So I have two bars, the little snug there because that's where the increase was, and carry on. So, you know, just keep, make sure you have two bars, keep going up along the way, when you get to the very end, I like to finish off with the figure eight at the very end one more time, and then snip it off and weave in your ends. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna continue on seaming this all the way up, and then I'm gonna show you how to weave in your ends, and then last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to make that super cute flower. All right, I'm at the very end of my work. You can see down here, I just finished the last pull through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab the stitch from this side and grab the stitch from this side, just like the figure eight I did before and pull them nice and tight. And if I come back through, just like that, okay? And now I'm ready to weave in my end. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just 
cup this like this. Now see how pretty that is on the inside? That's actually the inside of your mattress stitch, okay? So you, when I say it's pretty, it means I have this nice kind of thick seam right there, which makes it super easy to weave in tails. So I just came through, my yarn is popped over on this side, and all I need to do is take my yarn needle, and that it's still thread with my yarn, and pop it back through back, not like through that way, but through back and forth, this nice big seam I have here, just to lock it into place, okay? So I don't have to worry about disrupting the stitches themselves on the actual piece. I can just use this seam to my advantage by taking the yarn and the needle and threading it all the way through that, just a couple times, several times, actually is what I like to do, just to make sure, just because these are gonna be worn by little kids and you don't want it to come undone. Once you feel safe with how secure it is, go ahead and snip the tail, and then you're gonna do the same thing with all of the remaining ends. So this was my beginning tail, and I'm just threading it right onto my needle. I'm here at the, the start, and I'm just gonna, once again, thread it right through this nice big fat seam I have because it just makes it really easy to, to hide it, right? It's there, why not use it? Back and forth, I'm just going back and forth several times. I think that's plenty. I'm gonna snip it. I'm gonna come over here to the opposite side. Do the same thing with these two tails and then it will be all done. Go ahead, weave in your ends, your tails, and then we're gonna get started with the super cute garter stitch flower as the embellishment. Okay, so we have the leg warmer complete and we're gonna jump in and do this really cute flower embellishment. This embellishment is super cute and it's one that you could use on other things than just the leg warmers. I think I mentioned that at the very beginning. We're gonna start off by casting on three stitches. So I'm going to place my slip knot directly onto my, my needle and I'm gonna go ahead and do my cast on just like I did before with the knitted cast on. So I'm gonna go into the stitch with, that is my slip knot, knit it, extend and place that stitch onto my needle. Do that one more time because we just need three stitches. Remember your slip knot does count as, as a stitch in knitting. So I have my three stitches. Now it's time to do a knit front and back increase. For a knit front and back increase, it's super easy. We're gonna go into this stitch, go in, around, and out, extend the stitch, swivel around, go into the back leg of that same stitch, pull your yarn a little bit tight now, so now it tightens up that extended stitch, yarn over, and knit through the back leg of that stitch right there. So we knit front and back, and now we're gonna knit to the end of the row, which means we just knit these two stitches. One, two. Turn our work, and we repeat row one. We're going to repeat row one until we get a total of seven stitches. So let's do our knit front and back again. We go in, around, out, I like to extend my, my stitch a little bit so I can have room to swivel my right hand needle around. Go into the back leg of that same stitch, yarn over and come out and off and then knit to the end. If you need more instructions on how to do the knit front and back, there's a video available for that right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. You can find a link to that as well down in the video notes below, or just hit that little link right there on the screen and you can go directly to the knit front and back. I'm gonna continue on doing this until I get seven stitches. I have seven stitches on there right now, and now I just need to knit two rows even. So no more increases, I'm just gonna knit two rows even. So I will be able to have a little bit of body on my actual petal here. We're gonna end up making five of these petals, and then we're gonna place them all onto one needle and work all of them together in order to join them. So once I finish this row right here, I'm gonna show you what you need to do, okay? We will not be binding off. Once again, we're going to join all of these petals together. So you're gonna make a total of five petals. So once I'm done knitting this, this was my second row of just even knitting, 
The instructions say to cut the yarn, leaving stitches on the needle and do not bind off. Work four more petals, same as the first, placing all five petals in the same needle. Do not cut yarn from the last petal. Well, this is actually my last petal, so I'm not gonna cut the yarn, but I am gonna place these stitches on the needle with my other four petals. So as you go along, as you leave each petal on your needle, let's do it this way. As you leave each petal on your needle, you're going to have all four petals on there. You'll complete your fifth one. I didn't do it on this needle because I wanted to show you how to do it precisely. But now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these stitches on this needle. That scare you? It's not that hard. See? Pop, pop. Da, da, da. <laughs> All right, so I've placed those stitches on this needle, and so now I have a total of five petals completed, and they're all completed to the same point. And I did not cut the yarn on the very last one because we're going to use it, but I did cut the yarn on all four of the other ones, okay? So now we're moving on to the next step. It says the next row of petals. So I'm gonna knit across all of the petals. So I'm gonna go through all seven stitches of this one I just finished that the yarn is attached to, okay? And as I move to the next petal, you guys, see how it's not attached? I'm gonna just start knitting into that first stitch. It might be a little bit loose because the yarn that um, makes up that first stitch is a little bit loose. It's just hanging down there. It's okay, we can tighten those up. So that's all right that it's a little bit loose. So I just finished the second. Come here to the next. I'm gonna knit into it. See how it's loose? It's all right. I'm gonna continue on, just working across all of these stitches. All right, so I'm on my last stitch right here and I'm going to turn my work. Now, all of my petals are joined by that one row I just completed, okay? I can pull my tails down and it will tighten those stitches that were a little bit loose up there, but it's totally fine. This round, we're gonna do what I like to call a rapid decrease, meaning we're gonna do knit two togethers down this entire row. So we're going to take a, the number of stitches we have here and cut it in half, okay? So to do a knit two together, all you need to do is these two stitches right here, take your right hand needle, going into the second stitch from the tip of the left hand needle, I'm gonna go into that stitch and that stitch at the same time, and then knit them together. Okay, let's do that again. I'm gonna go into the second stitch from the tip of the needle, and then go into the first stitch at the tip of the needle. So I have two stitches. When I knit them together, that makes them into one. I'm going to do knit two together all the way down the row. What this is gonna do is it's gonna cinch all of the petals together so that they create a really pretty flower, okay? You can see here, yes, I'm holding my yarn in my other hand, but it's the same motion, you guys. Still putting my right hand needle into that, those two stitches, just like before, yarning over and finishing off. I can show you with the yarn in my other hand also. Go into these two stitches, yarn over, pop out these two stitches yarn over and pop out. It does feel a little fiddly, you guys, because the stitch is a little bit loose on the second, on that first row, you know, but it's going to be so pretty. These are so cute. Go ahead, do your knit two togethers all the way down the row, okay? When you get to the end of the row and turn, you should have a total of 18 stitches. So you turn your work and we're going to do knit two togethers all the way down this row. So just like before, we're gonna do a knit two together all the way down this row and you're gonna end up with nine stitches. Go ahead and get to that point now. After you have nine stitches, you're gonna turn your work and you're gonna knit one, knit two together to the end of the row. You're gonna be left with five stitches. Okay, you have five stitches and it looks something like this. Kind of a mess, <laughs> but I promise this is gonna turn out here really nice here in just a second. You wanna make sure you cut your tail leaving at least 12 inches. So I'm going to cut my tail leaving at least 12 inches, and I'm gonna thread that through the same yarn needle we used to seam our leg warmers together. So I'm threading it through my yarn needle, 
and it says to insert into the remaining five stitches and pull the yarn to fasten. Now, I have friends who like to insert as if to purl, so they go into the stitch as if to purl. I like to go into the stitch as if to knit because I think it makes it look prettier. So I'm going to go into the stitch as if to knit, take it off, pull the yarn through. Into the stitch as if to knit, take it off, pull the yarn through. Make sure you don't get your other tails all caught into there. As if to knit, pull it off, pull the yarn through. As if to knit, pull it off, whoop and pull the yarn through, and then the very last one, pull the yarn through. Once we've done that, all you do, look at this, look how cool this is. You pull that tail real nice and close. Look at that. You have a cute little flower. All you do now is weave in your tails, and then we can actually leave this long 12 inch tail um, nice and long and use it to seam it directly onto, or sew it directly onto our leg warmer. Once you've pulled this nice and tight, use your tapestry needle to go through those stitches that you just went through this last time one more time. I just like to take my needle and try and thread it through them one more time just to make the stitches nice and closed, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do first. So I've just taken the tail from the center and I just went around one more time just to kind of secure it, okay? And I could do it again if I wanted to, just kind of cinching through. That's all I'm doing is I'm cinching to make it closed. It doesn't have to be really pretty because I'm going to use a button there, a decorative button to really hide anything that might be unsightly at the um, center point because I want the button to really um, add some pop to the flower if, if that's what I'm, I'm going for. I'm going to take my my petal and I'm going to place it on my leg warmer. Now you can place it to the right or to the left or to the center, whatever you want. I just like to make sure that my seam is in the back. So I'm going to have my seam in the back of the leg warmer, knowing that if these are worn like this, do I want the flower to the right, to the left or to the center? Okay. So I'm going to just put these in the center and I'm going to take the yarn that's still attached to my needle here and I'm just gonna place it. Let's see, let's place it right there. I'm gonna pop my needle through and I'm just using my hands to guide it on the opposite side, okay? Making sure it's not snagging all these tails. These tails, they do feel like they get in the way, I will not lie, um, but this is a really great way to really use the concept of the, the tails to tack down the flower. Once I've pulled the yarn through to the inside, I can come in here and I can just, in a way, split my yarn on the inside, okay, to weave in my tail here and at the same time secure it to the leg warmer. You'll notice I'm going through all the purl bumps and I'm just splitting the yarn through the purl bumps. The reason I don't want to tie a knot is because this is going to be against the shin of the little girl wearing it, so I don't want it to have to rub any sort of a, a raw spot. So I'm just going up and down like a snake, going up and down and I'm splitting the actual yarn and working through, okay, because that's going to help it stay into place. Once I've done that, I can snip it, take my needle and pick one of the other tails and go from there. So I'm just going to grab this one. Let's see, this is one of the top petals. So let's say I want the petal right there. So I'm going to poke it through. Now that it's on the inside, I am going to secure it into place. So I'm going to start weaving in my tail to this side. It's really that easy. I'm using it to just poke it through. Now, if you wanted to, you could go back through to the right side of the work. So let me show you. I could go back through to the right side of the work and maybe pop it back through, let's see, I'll pop it back through the right side of the work through another point of the petal and then come across and come back through just to really kind of sew it into place. You could absolutely do that and then come back here and weave in your tails some more Whatever is the most comfortable for you, whatever you feel most secure with, okay? 
That's the biggest thing. This is just a decorative piece to these really cute leg warmers, okay? You can see here, once again, I'm just threading through the actual yarn and splitting it. I find that doing that with the acrylic yarn works really great. I really like it when I come back through maybe the same direction I had went before, and this time, instead of splitting the yarn on the piece, I'm splitting the yarn of my tail, sort of like a, what's called a Russian join, okay? So now I'm going through not only the yarn of the piece, but the yarn of the tail, and it secures it in place, and that is not gonna come undone when I do that. And it's nice and smooth, it's not going to hinder or rub a spot or anything like that. So now, when it's all complete, this is what you get. This really cute leg warmer with this super cute flower and a nice little button in the center to add a little bit of decoration. That's it. Now you know how to make these super cute leg warmers. It wasn't so hard, was it? They are so adorable and I definitely have a little girl in my life that would love to have a pair of these. Speaking of a pair, you do have to make two of these. So make sure you do not get stuck with second sock syndrome and not want to make the second leg warmer. So as soon as you finish the first one, go ahead and cast on for that second one and get it done just as quickly as you did the first. I would actually do that before you jump in and make the flowers. Make both leg warmers and then make the flowers second so that way you can have a nice little pair. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will come back for more videos right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. There is a My First with Marley Bird video released every month and it teaches you beginner skills for knitting and crochet. I really take the time to walk you through the project and hopefully teach you a few skills along the way to help you become better knitters. Please go and check out more patterns that are free over on the redheart.com website or join me over on the Marley Bird Facebook page. I will talk to you again soon, but before I go, make sure you smash that like button as my kids say. Talk to you later. I'm Marley Bird for redheart.com.